So here we have to start all over again because the dog went back into the kennel, which I, sh I should have taken out of the pen, but we didn't. So anyway, I put some treats in. He's a lot less responsive this time, or reactive, I should say, with my hand there. He's still snarling, but he's not completely fearful. He's just kind of like showing he's not going to dig it. So when I pulled this blanket out last time, he split and really, really ran out fast. So this time he kind of sits there for an extra second. And he kind of remembers the interaction. He smells me and everything, so he knows. But here we have to get him out of this, out of the kennel. Dogs that have these issues, it's usually not a good idea to let them go into a, a box like this or in, under a bed or anything like that. That's a negative. Notice when he snarls, I don't take my hand away and I don't push it further. I just let him see that there is no pressure there. That's a crucial part. So here, we'll get him out of here in one second. In fact, he actually took a treat in the kennel as a huge step, right? This is his safe zone, and his safe zone keeps him unsafe. You have to remember that a dog that won't come out of a kennel like this is not going to get adopted, is not going to get a home, and is not going to get handled, which is really important. So if a dog has a fear issue, don't give him a place to hide out. Make him face this head on and see that there's nothing negative about this. So here, look at the difference the way he came out that time. He didn't split out like in phase one, kind of just walked out calmly. He takes the same corner position. Very normal for dogs to take a corner position because fearful dogs will box themselves in a corner and not be able to go anywhere else, which is usually when they end up biting somebody because somebody puts frontal pressure on them. In both phase one and two, notice I stay to the side of the dog. My body is only sideways on the dog during these first two phases. You'll see in a little while, I do put some frontal pressure on the dog just to test it. But this is the way to decompress this phase or this feeling in the dog. And we do the exact same process again. We do not talk to the dog. We don't try to grab the dog. We push the treats forward. We have the treats available to him if he wants them. But I'm not leaving. I'm not going to leave that kennel. He has to put up with me there. There's nothing going to happen. I'm not going to hurt him. I'm not going to touch him. But I am going to stay there. Dogs that can't interact with humans do not get adopted. So here, watch if I hold this treat up. He's still ignoring me now. Where before, remember, just two hours before this, he was in my lap. So people say, well, he regressed. That's normal. He doesn't know the drill yet. He's learning the drill as we go. So this has to be done over and over and over in 15, 20 minute increments, just being in the, in the kennel with the dog. Let him snarl. If he snarls, I wait till he stops snarling. When he stops snarling is when I take my hand away. I don't take my hand away while he's snarling. I let him work through that. Now here, you, I think is the point where he tries to bite. Okay, so see that was the phase that's really important to watch. So pay attention here. You'll see that he bites, but my hand does not move. All he's getting is food, and that's why he kind of spooked out. Like, where did this food come from? And gets stuck to the roof of his mouth, so he tries to spit it out. And that was exactly the lesson I want him to learn. Again, he bites, and he gets nothing out of it. There's no reaction from me. I'm not pulling back. I'm not yelling at him. I'm not hurting him. The hand, does, it never leaves his presence. So something positive is happening, even though he's giving me a negative action. I'm not responding with a negative. I'm not punishing him. He's not being dominantly aggressive. He's afraid of that hand. If that hand then hurts him, it only cements the idea that that hand is there to hurt him. So this is a lot easier to do with a small dog than a big dog. With big dogs, we need a lot more protection. But for him to see, okay, now I can take food from the hand. And remember, he did this in phase two where he didn't do it in phase one. Phase one, he was cool. Phase one, he never really bit. So the pressure is up, the uh, energy is up for him. He's fighting harder. And this is what I call the breaking phase where he's gonna start to see what is expected of him, what he needs to do. And this needs to be consistent, it needs to happen 10, 20, 30 times before we know where this dog sits. This is not a cure-all session. This is not a fix where some trainers will say, oh, in five minutes I fix this dog. There is no fixing dogs in five minutes. This is about working a dog through their issues, onto their issues, and over their issues. So they have to experience all this. They have to see this. They have to learn to trust. 
They have to learn to gain their strength. It's their strength that's going to make them get through this. There's nothing I can do except be a guiding light in this picture. I can be a steady source of, um, of confidence for the dog. So I'm not pulling away and I'm not hurting him. He can work through this and he's working through it with my guidance, but it's not something I'm doing or, or creating for him. Every time he sees that hand, there's food. There's some food on the floor, but at this point I'm going to do less with the food on the floor. Notice he's not even taking the piece on the floor right there. He's going to go take it out of my hand. And here we're about halfway into this or about another, you know, 10, 15 minutes into the process. So now again, this is where we were in, in phase one where he's now walking over taking the food out of my hand, coming closer to my body. And we're going to replicate exactly what we did in phase one, but you'll see it starts to happen a little bit more confidently, a little faster. And he's taking the food out of my hand. He's closer to me. Notice his ears are softening. His whole body posture is softening. He doesn't have that crazy left leg lifted and, and shaking. Remember, he bit me. He, you know, and these gauntlet gloves are really great because the dog can't bite through them. They, they can't puncture your skin. Again, see somebody gets back to the kennel and they start talking to the dog and look at the dog's tail back between the legs, ears are pinned back. And now it's harder for me to get the dog back over to, to me because he got spooked by the person coming by. Again, talking to the dog is a negative in this phase. There is no talking. But since we're in a public shelter, there's nothing I can do to prevent people from coming by and doing that. The best thing to do would be have this dog in the back where people can work with them and not let them be distracted by other influences. So every time that happens, he regresses back to the corner and needs to learn the confidence to come back over. Talking to dogs most of the time is a negative. The dog will learn through your body language. That's all I'm using here. He moves forward, he gets treats, there's no pressure, there's no touching him, there's no trying to handle him or anything like that. And there's definitely no talking because he has no idea what I'm talking about if I start talking. And you'll see here that I'm going to try to get him into my lap again and you'll see a big change in the dog in just a few minutes. This is all about patience. This is not about crate crazy technique or great knowledge this is about patience so now i can pet the dog and again i put the treat down so he comes closer after the petting i'm petting and again this is something no one was able to do you know an, an hour before i went in the first time at all the dog was just locked in that little crate so here now he's being petted more and more and he's, he's i'm actually putting pressure on him petting him and you'll see that i take the glove off and I can touch him with my hand. I don't really recommend doing this for most people because you could get bit. I felt relatively confident that the dog had learned the lesson and I want him to experience this touch over and over. But if the dog bites you, you're going to have some, some holes. But as you see here now, I can see from the dog's body posture, the tail's a little bit more relaxed. Still tucked under, but it's a little bit more relaxed. And every time that touch happens, his body softens up a little bit. It doesn't get stiff. He's not pulling away. If he was, I would not be doing this, but I'm actually able to really rough him up a little bit, touch him, handle him. And now you can see his ears are relaxed, whole body's relaxed, and he's eating while we're interacting, while I'm petting him. And that would be the phase where I would leave it with this dog. This would be the end of the training for this session. And then I might do another session tomorrow even one or two sessions like this a day for a fearful dog is great. In the beginning, you can start by just sitting in the kennel with the dog and checking your email or texting or reading a book or something. You don't necessarily need to interact with the dog. The dog just needs to see and feel the presence of a human so that he can feel confident about it. It has nothing to do with touching or forcing this on the dog. This will happen just as fast if you're in the dog's presence and are reading. At some point, the dog will come over to you. Treats are great the best way to do this if you have a dog that has some kind of food drive. Patience, patience, patience.